Sam Sam is is doing a uh, doing a dot net conf I think for Odata, so he's not going to be able to join us today. But I thought you're around. You're you're missing around as usual in the Discord channel. So I was like, hey, let's let's talk to Paul then. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, that's like, it's like my second home, Discord. <laughs> <laughs> so I live there. So listen, um, Sam and I kind of wrapped up uh, the whole piece around uh, uh, doing. Let me kind of show you here real quick. Uh, we wrapped up the piece for um, uh, kind of taking a raw O data, sorry, raw uh, expression, a kind of stringified expression, and basically turning it into an actual link expression, like an expression tree. Right. Okay, so just to kind of clarify things too, yeah? You know... So we're getting back an iQueryable, right? Yes. So, so okay. check this out. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, we basically went and said... Not even an iQueryable. It's an expression that you can apply to an iQueryable or anything else. Oh, nice. So you right. so given an iQueryable, you can just say, hey. Here's, here's this expression. Apply, apply it. Apply that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so is the plan to build as part of presumably the API for the libraries to build some kind of like, you know, iQueryable dot apply OData expression or something? No, I thought I thought you could do that uh, automatically from uh, if you go into any iQueryable and do. Let me show you. Let's let's. That's actually a good question. So, yeah. <clears throat> I, do... I was thinking that what we would build is you, you'd say like you know iQueryable dot apply OData and then you give it the raw OData string and it would call into all of the code that we're writing. Ah, oh, I see. Yes, yes, yeah. we should be able to do something like that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, because the library now it's a library, we can use it whatever. But if I do nice. expression, let's see, um, if I do, uh... yeah, it occurred to me that the existing OData framework um, depends on OData lib, which from what I understand is the underlying library and that's provided by someone else. Is it provided by like someone at Oasis or something like that? What, the library for... Yeah, OData lib it is. It's a NuGet package. I mean, so, it's, I, I mean, it's a it's a standard. It's a it's a it's a it's a guideline. But uh, OData lib itself, no, we Microsoft built that. Oh, okay. Ah, oh, so it's yeah. a it's a Microsoft thing. So is that part of the code that Sam built, and he just depends on it when he wrapped it up in the ASP Net for? Mm -hmm. So could we not just reuse that? It, it has to be standardized. It has to be uh, test driven. It has to be broken and split into smaller pieces and put back. You see, the point is, is not to get something working. That's a nice side effect. The yeah, point yeah. is to pick up a system and standardize it and make friends. And then only by accident, something is going to come from the other side, right? Because Odin is already at, you know, I was just talking, I'm going to record this session tonight. Uh, someone uh, who is a Java enthusiast, right? Uh, he reached out to me, and he's like, "Listen, I, I still exist." <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> By the way, you know, if you see top programming languages in yeah. 2022, everyone tried to kill Java, and nobody could. Nobody could kill Java. Java's still, still out there. Watch this. So JavaScript, Python, and Go, and Java. Yeah. No, th ma no matter what. The uh -huh. thing, thing is, there's, there's a lot of, like, I guess at this point, legacy infrastructure out there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of... So when you look at things like um, IoT devices or, like, um, smart TVs and things like that, Java was already kind of the big cross-platform mm -hmm. guy, if you know what I mean, in, in the and, whole and all, space. all your Android development is going through Java. All Like, some people are using Kotlin. Some people are using... Uh, different languages, but still Java, man. You know, here's the IEE yeah. spectrum. Watch this. Java is still going, right? You know, now it's true, like C Sharp is starting to kind of, you know, exceed its own influencer. Like C Sharp is just a daughter of Java, you know? And I wonder how, um, how like misgiving pictures like this are. Because if you look at, say, if you did a breakdown of the C code and the C code, 
and mm. you looked and you said, well, how much of that is running on .NET? Oh, for C and C++? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't reckon... matter. It, this is talking about the language adaptation. Like, I work with right. people on a daily basis who never touch .NET. All their work is in C and, and Rust. Yeah, which is understandable. Right. Yeah. So, so anyway, so everybody tried to kill Java, including James Gosling. Like James Gosling himself, he said, "I don't care about Java." He 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 created Java, right? He cares more about the JVM than Java. That's his maturity. That's his growth. He came into a point where he said, "Java is just a a a a dummy way of expressing what the JVM is actually doing on the machine." Yeah. So from his perspective. I don't care, right? Like, I don't care. You could be using Scala. You could be using Kotlin. You could be using Java. They're all going back to the JVM, right? So it's been a while since I've, I've done anything to do with Java, but my understanding is that, like, in, in, a, in our .NET ecosystem, when we compile stuff, we end up with an assembly full of MSIL, right? Mm -hmm. So presumably Java libs are just full of Jill. Jars. Java. <laughs> Yeah, so jar files. What do yeah. they contain? Do they, is it compiled in some way? Yeah, I, I, jar files is just a zip file. So what's inside jar files? Let's find out. Uh, in a simple words, a jar file is a file that contains a compressed version of dot .class files. Oh, Audio so files. it's, it's yeah. compressed, but it's still Java, right? It's, it's, it seems to be still Java. So the JVM... Mm -hmm. Does does it not have an an IL? Because I, I, I thought that was how you got like effectively the sandboxing of having a virtual machine, right? Was you had an intermediary language, and then the um, the the sandbox effectively orchestrates to use the standard terminology between the what's going on inside the sandbox, and then obviously the underlying hardware at the you know the driver or OS level, right? Because it's uh, it, it's producing so, that native code. Yeah, so I'm looking at this. It has a class loader. I guess that's the dot class file that is inside yeah. of the jar. The JVM memory has method area heap, JVM language stacks, PC registers, native method stacks, and then there's an execution engine that takes You know it what in. we should do? Yeah. We should have one of these calls, and we should get a Java expert in. And we yeah. should compare the two approaches because I'm genuinely interested in this because sure. whilst I like I don't like Java as a language, I find it too wordy. Like C sharp mm -hmm. in places ha has historically been wordy, but recent language improvements have made it less so. But I find that like the verbosity of it is just excessive. But mm -hmm. I mean, beyond that, Java and C sharp do have a lot in common. Oh yeah, uh, big time. And the stuff that they sit on, like you could do a lot of comparisons between JVM and .NET, but I bet you there are some key technical differences that are just really interesting. And it, it's not to say like whether they're right or wrong in any way. It's just like I bet there's some like really interesting technical decisions that were made at some point when these like technologies got put together. Mm -hmm. And I'd be curious just to sort of do a proper like actually sit down with somebody who understands yeah. like you know like, like most of us .NET guys you know we have an understanding of like mm -hmm. what's inside an assembly or what have you mm -hmm. but it would be good to have like one of the, the scots or whatever you know one of the guys that put together yeah. um you know the .NET virtual machine and have them sit down and have a discussion with somebody who made the java virtual machine and the you know just have them talk it out because you never see that. There's always this like rivalry between the, the technologies, but never the actual, yeah, let's talk. You know, we're all in the same boat. We're all programmers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I we're know. Uh, 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 the, the, I think that it's not that. It's the adaptation gives business. You understand? Like if you invent a programming language and this programming language starts to, to catch high adaptation, that means books, tutorials, uh, libraries. It's a business, right? Mm -hmm. So the beautiful thing about some of the most powerful languages in the world is that the people that built it were not thinking about business. Yeah. Right? They're they nerds were, like us. They, they just want to build stuff for the sake of building, right? Right. So exactly. That's exactly like us. We're just sitting here 
you know, believe me when I tell you like 70% of the things I do in the tech industry is for free. I don't get paid a dime for it, right? I was talking to someone about this the other day and he said, of course you do. You get your, uh, you get hired and you get your jobs because of your YouTube channel and all that. I said, nope, almost 90% of the jobs that I got throughout my whole life, right, were by people who weren't even on YouTube. They don't even, they don't even know that I exist on LinkedIn or YouTube, right? It's funny, isn't it? You, you get paid for the knowledge that you can display in an interview you don't really get paid for any of your past efforts. You can have all the YouTube channels in the world. You can have written all the most amazing code, but it ain't worth squat. What you get paid is basically a salary. It's mm -hmm. That's capitalism at practice, right? And I, I, this is why I love it when you talk about kind of the way programmers should be paid. If yep. you put a line of code out there in the wild. Visualizing, yeah. yeah. This, this Paul is going gonna, is gonna to ruffle some feathers. Like this, this idea of... You, if you put a piece of code out there, you put a piece of yourself out there, and you should be, you should continue to get paid based on that uh, contribution that you made to this project. Especially if it's like a running project that's already making profits, right? Yeah. Engineers should be given the option to go and say, "Hey, you get paid by region, you know, <laughs> code region, right?" So if the code, if the, if the if the request is going through that code region, what's that request worth? When I worked on Xbox, a request, you know, would be worth the subscription, right? So if you're making a $10 subscription, if you're making a, a $50 or a year subscription to this this 5x5 five five token that you use in Xbox, it all comes down to what is it actually worth, Right. But, now, but have, presumably I, your code is a piece of it, right? So it's not it, worth the whole yes, subscription. It, it must it must be, yeah, a piece of it. Exactly. Yeah. Of course. Like, you know, massive, massive systems. But then also at the same time, like uh I have to say, like, imagine this, like imagine a world where you know you, you may choose to say, Nope, I wanna get paid once and then it's none of my business, or I wanna be uh, I wanna put an investment into this code base. And get paid by it this is going to be into a, a new book called called the standard business like how do you actually build a software business that can drive people you know to kind of want to invest in and work with but you know with that being said um anyway so i'm excited to meet this guy his name is uh, his name is eric and uh you know he's actually sorry ethan and uh, ethan gordon and he's super excited about java salesforce all of that stuff i'm like all right man let's do it you know he's like i didn't know if i should approach you know since he seemed to be so ingrained into dotnet i'm like stop with the dotnet c sharp guys i come from a really really heavy scala background i don't think people really hear that part they don't see that part or hear that part anyway yeah, and it's funny like i never really talk about it but i started out in sort of pascal and c plus mm -hmm. plus um my first programming job believe it or not was um in visual basic you know and it's like you know people will you know berate you for ha mm -hmm. ever having dealt with visual basic but like to my mind like just knowing one language these days isn't, isn't going to get you very far in it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you've got to kind of like spread your skill set a little bit because the the lack of kind of exposure to other technologies can obviously reflect in like the it, it will limit your you imagination have. yep exactly exactly mm -hmm. especially if you're having like a design discussion and you know someone is saying well you can't do that be like well folks in pearl do it all the time you know like i said <laughs> safe navigation elvis annotation all of these things all of these things are influenced by other languages anyway mm. just to bring you back into this uh so so hear me out paul uh we went all the way down to going and saying hey this is you know we can actually generate an expression you know, a real expression only for the select scenarios, of course, like we're willing to expand. But if I can get that alpha release out, that'd be a great, great start. So mm -hmm. so here's the deal. We have we have the tokenization, we have the projection and then O tokenization. And then we had an orchestration service sitting in the middle of all of this saying, hey, I am the O tokenization service. I go and process and orchestrate. And then we went, Sam and I basically added the first block in here, which is something called the expression service, right? So this is tokenization. 
service. This is your projection service. And this is your O tokenization <clears throat> service. And this is your O tokenization orchestration service. Tokenization orchestration service. So now, like, like just based on this structure, you could have any exposure layer, a client or whatever, that will receive a raw O data query. And through some orchestration service that is supposed to sit here, we don't know what it is yet. You know, it's going to probably expression orchestration service or something. You know, it will basically delegate the work of either converting from an expression to, uh, sorry, converting from a raw query, a raw O data query into an expression or from an expression back into a raw O data query. So one or the other, right? So imagine this, all of this is done. This is done. The last piece is the hard piece, right? This hard piece is very interesting because in here we have to go and say, I need to have an O data, let's call it query service. And this query service is supposed to kind of, this will be an expression uh, orchestration service, right? Let's see here. And this is, yeah. So, so this here is the interesting part because you're getting, you're getting a, an expression as an input and you're trying to turn that into an O data, an O data raw query. So select statement, name, uh, you know, age, whatever, and you need to take that and turn it into an O data query. We got away with this one with something called an expression broker that uses C sharp. This is expression broker. And this expression broker using C sharp script. Basically pass in the query and it gives us back the expression. It was simple and easy. Sam was a little bit shocked to see that one. He was like, like I had to do a lot of work to kind of get a an O data. You have you ha he had to do right node, left node, uh, do that tree and everything. And I was like, my man, we could just, you know, we could just use this C sharp um uh, script in here and we will just give it the link expression that we just created and it and we will run it as a c-sharp script and it'll give us back a, a, a c-sharp it looks like this we just go and say data source give me the expression done that's why i said to you at the beginning didn't i i said oh have you considered using Rosalind? yeah because you can literally just write the link expression that you want to build as Ooh. a string and yep yeah, it will just build the expression tree for you. We the got a magic of just like leveraging the compiler like that is just truly impressive because it means that then you're just relying on like the core.NET teams to yep. kind of do the job for you. Essentially. Yep, you guys do the work and I'll do something useful on top of it. Right. Yeah. So, by the way, just so you know, like Sam is a core, core engineering team. He's not going to go and do something like that unless you actually push him to. It'll be like, no, I want to build this. Even if the entire .NET framework fell apart, my code could still <laughs> could still run and function. So this is this is where I have a lot it's of a respect. Proper Unlike yeah. us, we just think yeah. of the stuff. Yeah, we're <laughs> dude, dude. I am fraud. I'm telling you. I'm talk about myself. I'm fraudulent, fraudulous. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'll go and I'm say, the okay, worst developer ever. But what? if I can point at what somebody else did and went, ah, why did I cheat? And he's that. <laughs> I'll go and say what's the simplest, easiest way that I can explain to people, right? And I'm pretty sure there's an engineer out there losing their mind. Like, you know, someone reached out to me and he said, this approach of yours, I'm disappointed. I said to him, why? Why, why are you disappointed? He said, dude, you, you are a, a senior engineer. You're building a system that's supposed to have enterprise systems built on top of it. And you're doing this hacky shit. And I was like, listen, man, it's simple. I can explain it to people and it's easy. I'm not saying mm -hmm. it's ideal, but I think it's okay. You I, know, I think there's a certain amount of like um, pick your battles, right? So like what we're already trying to solve is a complicated problem. Yeah. And, and this is one piece of it. And nothing stops us saying, hey, right. So now we've got our library out there. It's Let's go really build some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's take this bit where people said we cheated and not cheat. 
yes, build a subsystem and let yeah. that subsystem kind of. I am okay with that. We can go and, and say Odata, can... Odata Neo. Uh, we can we can go and say Odata Neo native core, and we can go and say, okay, this piece in here, we're actually going to standardize. Exactly. I, I'm okay with that. It's not like I'm going to run out of names. You know, yeah, that's and, and, and funny enough, like people always ask me like how I get so much done, and I'm like, well, yeah, this is the sort of thing that you do. You, what you do is you start at the high level, you build yeah. out something that kind of does the job, and uh -huh. but is is tested, so you know it does the job. Yeah, and then you go and then you revisit it, and you go, well, I've got all these dependencies. How can I get rid of a few of them? Because <laughs> I don't like relying on these. You know, how often do I say to you, you know? The ODA yep. framework in its current form is a black box. I don't yep. know, depending on it, because I don't know what it does. Yeah. Um, entity framework, it's a black box. I don't yeah. like depending on it because I don't know what it does, but you I haven't had the time. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I haven't had the time to rebuild it. So, in lieu of a better option, I'll depend on it for now. I'll write some wrap around it. And later on, I'll figure out how to build my own system for that. But until right. I've got the time, I just have to accept that there are limits to what I can achieve. Right. And I, and I think some programmers get like stuck in this mentality like they have to solve every problem when in right. actual fact no you've got to solve the business case that you're faced with but how you solve it if somebody else has already solved it and you whack a wrap around that and you say there you go it's problem solved well right. so be it right <laughs> whack a rack i love that i love whack, that whack a wrap around it yeah so speaking oh whack a wrap i see okay so yeah. So the real question here is, and this is why, Paul, I wanted you to come to this session. So the, the way that comes to my mind is to basically pick up an expression in order for us to turn it into a data query. We're going to have to do a little bit of work, right? I don't and think we can cheat with this one, can we? But we, we should learn some one. lessons because I think, like, for example, Entity Framework, it takes an expression tree and builds a SQL statement. Right. How do um, they do that? Yeah, they use something called an expression visitor. So what they do is they crawl the expression tree. And for okay. every node in the tree, they evaluate that and turn that into a piece of the SQL query. Mm. So I haven't looked. Yeah, I haven't looked deep, deep into it, but it's um, basically like linked to SQL and linked to um, you know objects and linked to uh, linked to EF or whatever it is under the bonnet. Um, is essentially the same technology. It's all expression visiting stuff. So it's visitor pattern at scale. Nice. Uh, um I guess so that's gonna be fun <laughs> yeah that's gonna be really fun it's it's gonna be interesting to see so basically you have a thing that's coming in like this that says student at arrow uh is it fat arrow yeah i think so um and then you have new and then you have an open uh, parentheses and then you have a student dot name and then uh, maybe you have a comma like this so this is student and then you have uh, let's say student dot grade And then maybe we can go and say, give me the closing for this guy. So we're going to be receiving this as input, right? And we're supposed to produce out of this something that looks a lot like this. So it would be, we would keep these two, and it would be name, comma, grade. And then uh, out of all of this, actually, there's there's a little piece here that we're missing, which is select. So that's your expression. So this select stays. The only reason, the only thing is that we turn it into this, this, and that's your thing. So that's your expression. Yeah, I think the equal sign would be a token as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's right. Based on our... This contributions, <laughs> right? So that would this, probably go under the fat arrow. 
Probably, yes. So it's it's something like this. Yeah. Right. So select name grade. You know, it kind of picks it up. It it doesn't seem to be too hard, but that's the thing about hard mm -hmm. problems. They masquerade. They they kind of show up. Be like, oh look, it's so easy. Like for instance, let me tell you this. How do you even parse an expression that's doing multiple selects? Like you have nested nested entities, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say the student grade is actually a class, and it has an mm -hmm. ID, and it has a value, right? In 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 O data, that's easy. We just open parentheses, and we put the thing. I don't know. I don't know if you could do that in in a link expression. That's actually an interesting problem to to kind of look into. How do you even go about? I think you probably. I think you probably could because if you have, let's do this. We're going to have to make some weird decisions, aren't we? Because like. Oh yeah. It, Expression trees and uh, OData expressions are not quite not the same. Friends. Like, th there's a difference between, like, say, a select and an expand in mm -hmm. OData. Whereas, like, in a link expression tree, like, you've got the whole object, whether mm -hmm. you expand or not, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you can subselect and you still get like a child tree. Because if yeah. I have um, an object that has like a property which um, is an object property. It's not like a primitive. It's a complex type. Mm -hmm. Then simply by saying I'm, I'm selecting that, if that complex type then contains child collections, I get those anyway. I don't have to explicitly state that. But in OData, I do. I have right. to further then say, actually, what I'm selecting is my expansion. Right. So, so here's the deal. So imagine this. Imagine if you have... Uh, I see what you're saying. Void, foo. Let's say you have a list of things. New list of something. So if you were to select this, you say list of things dot select, and then you say thing, and then you can say new thing dot id. That AI is getting nuts, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So this is a nested something, nested thing. So if they're doing that, it would be something like another. So we can say here nested. See how it's going to change? And then it's going to be new, another new sub model, sub, sub, uh, uh, sub entity into this and inside this sub entity we're basically going and saying oh and out of that give me a uh give me the nested so thing dot nested thing dot id let me pull that to the next layer so people can see actually what the heck we're doing here that the, the black magic that engineers have to deal with so like that so you basically went and said i have an id i'm gonna keep it as is but for everything else i'm gonna go and create my own sub entity this is what translates to an o data into uh dollar sign select equal and then you have id and you have nested and inside nested, you're saying select equal again, and then you're basically saying ID. That's the O data equivalent. Yeah, and, and if you look at the way that you've defined the object there, you've changed the property name of nested because you defined yep. it as nested thing. Yep. So I don't even know if there's syntax for that in O data. Is there? Is there a way I can say select? You can say a new as. object. Yeah. Can I? Ah, yeah, so I can say select can say nested as. thing as. X, y, nested. I think so. So could I just do that? Say so select select ID comma Ooh. nested thing as nested. Would that would that be actually, an appropriate actually, conversion? Actually, we should we just just say this has to be the same name nested thing. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. Which is what this guy is having, and then you're going and saying no out of nested thing, 
Yeah, it still has the same uh, name. Actually, that's not correct because Why? your OData query there is going to return the two IDs in a single line item. Nope. It'll no? be it will be an object, and inside of it there is another object. You sure? Oh yeah, because you've not used uh, if you use forward slashes, it flattens it out, doesn't it? Right. Is that right? right. So if you just said nested slash ID, yeah, or nested thing slash ID, then it would have returned them as flat. But because you're saying, yeah, okay, yeah. So there's some really weird quirks here. We're going to have to figure out how to. <laughs> like um... imagine, imagine if the person that's giving us the expression wants to be adventurous and they want to go and say, "Oh, actually, I want to name this something else." Right. So you, you started off you started off in draw.io, right? So you, yeah. you drew out the diagram. Um, right. In the diagram, you kind of mapped out the list of effectively the nodes in the expression tree, right? Right. And then underneath that, you put the tokens that we're expecting. So we've already got code, if I recall, that goes yep. from a collection does of the O tokens yep. Yep. to uh, an O data string. So if yep. we can expression tree into tokens which are also hierarchical aren't they mm -hmm. then going from the o tokens to a string should be trivial if we can that's it that's it right there what you just said if we yeah. can if we can print out uh, o expression uh, nodes and flatten them paul we, we can flatten them we can easily go and say i want to be i can now I can now take these nodes. Now the the question is, can you actually flatten them? Let's let's take a look. Can you yeah, actually you, take it? You, you can write a recursive function, right? That calls itself, gets a flat list of the child tokens, and then embeds them in a parent list of the child tokens and returns the whole lot. That's how we're gonna do it, right? So if I go into so okay, hold on. Yeah. I think that's probably it. So uh, weirdly, so I wrote um a data utility that because uh, we had this problem where a client was sending us really weird like xml files mm. and the structure was so um, difficult to work with that we made the decision that what we would do is we would take the xml tree mm -hmm. uh, we would parse that into so we had a node tree effectively xml node tree so an xml mm -hmm. document object essentially mm -hmm. we used x document on it and then I wrote a link flatten so I could just do um, because I was treating it as an X document, I had an expression tree. So then I could just call expression tree dot flatten. Mm -hmm. And what it gave me back was a flat array of objects from the nested tree where what it would do is it would traverse the tree and for each child, mm -hmm. it would put the child items on the parent node. And it did that recursively until it got back out to the root, and then it returned that as a flat array. We can actually we can actually steal what the XML guys did. They basically said, "Oh, here's a here's a way I can spit out all the pieces for you." There could nice. be a thing like that. Yeah, there could be a thing like that in see uh, how to find all nodes. Query transform XML to link. Let's look at this. What is that? Yeah. live book okay so here's that so essential.net okay whatever that is and then x element load let me see if i've still got that handy category book and then element hmm. here you go Check this out. What did you send? Uh, I'll drop it to you, to you in the uh, chat. Odata channel. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Okay. May, this may or may not um, obviously be compilable, in, but just drop that into Visual Studio or whatever, and we can have a look at it. Let's see. So essentially... Uh -huh. This takes in a source object, 
and I don't really care kind of what the object is. Right. Um, but then what I do is I analyze and figure out. So there's a bit more complication in there than there needs to be, but you probably want one of the multiple cases that that solves. Uh, uh. Yeah, so I was working with things like um, data that I'd got from um, JSON parsing, for example, mm -hmm. um, things like that. So I was able to... Um, I was able to just like take the recursively crawl the J object and the J tokens. Um, but uh, where is it? Here, line 68, 69, 70, where essentially what we do is if we treat the parent as a dictionary of string object, then you can say for each object, you can recurse back into this function and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially what you can do is you can build out new property keys, mm -hmm. um, which I was just using underscore as a separator here. Mm -hmm. So I ended up with property names, which would be like parent underscore child property name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then nice. I basically just, that was how I flattened it all out essentially. So this is really rough cut stuff. And we, oh, but yeah. of, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's like edge case um, scenario here, but this might give us some hints because um, if we're doing the same sort of thing with an expression tree, imagine you've got um, an expression. Um, so you've got, yeah, an expression. You can look at the type and you can say, hey, what is it? It's a property expression. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I know that represents a property assign or, or something, mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And then you can take the value. Um, in, well, in fact, it kind of almost doesn't matter, does it, right? Because you can pretty much just take the, tr the text from any expression node. Mm -hmm. And then you can say, hey, from that text, that's what I want to initially start with. We can build out O tokens based on that text and then translate it if necessary. Yep, yep. So an expression. Take one of your um, unit tests that you've already got that builds a random expression tree. And then what we'll do is if we if we run the test up to that point that we've got the expression tree, we can then delete the rest of the test and put some new code in there to tinker with it. Right. So the expression that we built here, actually, it does. It's it's just it's just uh, where is it? Uh, expression. Garbage. Yeah, it's just it's just uh, it's just the garbage. We don't really take care because mm -hmm. it's something that your broker is doing. Well, well let's give it let's give it some fixed stuff in a new test then just so that we know what we're playing with oh i see and yeah. then we can build out the expression tree for that um and then we can see what we get because then what we can do is we can take that expression tree and we can visit a pattern visit every node in it and then just spit out the, the raw text from that and see what the differences are right and i think find it will be pretty much like what you put in draw.io yeah. It'll be the top line, right? So if you take the top line, then you say this goes to that. Right. Right. <laughs> this is yeah, this is what yeah, hold on. So expression dot and you're saying add something like that or add a sign and you have left, right. That's why Sam is building it this way. He's basically yeah. going and saying property and then value. And here's my assignment. And inside that expression, he goes and says, Oh, expression property right property or field and then he defines what that property or it's a tree you're building a tree like that right exactly. uh, that's we, why they call them expression trees <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Duh. laughs> sorry <laughs> so so let me tell you this we're not even interested into building it we just want to go and say what does this thing you. entail right so expression dot and reduce execution time no type type value so yeah what's think, in the value yeah an i think object. an object of type expression has like two key properties doesn't it, it has a, a type and a value the it's, value it's, is going to be a string isn't it or it's also it smart object? like it has types like if you go here and say constant it's just giving you a constant expression like in here it gives you key value but look at this if you say I don't know. I want to do an add, like add a sign like this, mm. right? And I'm saying here is here is uh, expression uh, field. What does Visual Studio do? Because uh, no, not Visual Studio. There is um, a method that you can call on an expression tree. If you've got um, 
like say I've got um, um, an expression generic type, you know, funk uh, string object, blah, 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 whatever mm -hmm. it is, right? If mm -hmm. I've got one of those, I can just say dot. Um, it's not too string. It might be too string. Actually. Oh, Paul, you know what we can do? I know how we're gonna. I I know how we're gonna be fraudulent, and do the right thing. Do you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna Who get. We're gonna rip off this time. <laughs> the, data, the data team. The data team. Nice. So so watch <laughs> this. So converting converting an expression into a SQL and then taking that SQL and turning it into an O data is so easy. Oh. <laughs> We're fraud. We're fraud. <laughs> oh, oh. Right? Right? Am I wrong? <laughs> oh, that's... Right? We can have like a broker sitting behind. Oh, I got it. That's it. Paul, Man. this is exactly what we need to do. Just so... don't put me in the firing line of Arthur. <laughs> 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 so just think about this. You know, it's a lot easier to convert... It's giving you a raw SQL query, right? Raw query, right? You can go through this and basically go and say, okay, my dude, this is exactly what I want, right? The thing about raw SQL, though, is that it's going to bite us hard if we are doing a, a nested select, right? Because SQL is always working with primitive types, I don't know how um, the entity framework does it, but I'd love to see what that SQL that comes from the other side looks like. Is it is this going to incur though a big dependency stack? It's only Cause... gonna be it's only gonna be the entity framework, the data, the core entity framework. You, you know how big that framework is, right? It's like millions of lines of code. I mean, it's just a dependency. I mean, we pull in fluent assertions and mock. Do you know how big mock is? Mock is huge. You know, it doesn't yeah, mean... Yeah, but mock doesn't end up in your production environment. Like, I, I get, well, that's, okay, that's most true. people are already running EF, but, like, you want this to be an efficient library when it's done, right? Yeah, we can, we can totally optimize. We just need the conversion part. We don't care yeah. about... Dude, you have, like... You have what about like... link to SQL? Yeah, what about link to SQL? That's a good question. Let's see. Because that's like the, the tiny bit of EF that just focuses on that job, right? Yeah, but is it maintained properly? And is it, uh, let's see, link to SQL? Is it still a thing? <laughs> link to SQL is a component of .NET framework version blah. A runtime. Uh-oh. So it's a part of the .NET framework. Just so you know. Is it open source though? Because if it's open source, potentially we, we could it. Yeah, we, we could like copy paste the bits out that we want. And then instead of generating SQL, we could generate tokens or potentially just pieces of the ODATA query. If we do hold on, if we do link to SQL online. Yeah, there's link pad. I just want to see. Do you have this link pad by any chance? Uh, not installed, but I have used it in the past. It's cracking. Why don't they have it online that I could just use it like in a link to so how to generate SQL? I think this is it. You know, I think we can go and say, my dude, I can basically go and pull in the entity framework and say, hey, generate, generate SQL for me. And mm -hmm. it, it doesn't have to be the entity framework, but it, it this seems to be the most up-to-date library. Like, okay... Uh, C sharp invert link to SQL. Don't like the idea of writing our own expression tree visitor then. Yeah, yeah, that's a bad idea. Why would you do that? You know, if you have like, okay, so there's link pad. No, that's that. What is this thing? Definition system dot data dot link. Ooh, <laughs> watch this. So, <laughs> Visual Studio, add new get package. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> boom. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. So, if I go and do, let's see, let me convert all of this junk. 
probably want to build out like um, just as a sort of test case for while we're figuring out the problem. Just like take say um, Euro Triple S models or something. Um, just take like four or five of the classes from there. Okay. Uh, so you've got like students and classes and things like that, and then just like randomly use like something like M Builder or Filler or something to just build yourself out a, a student because then the expressions will be meaningful. We don't care about the data. We could, we um, could hand over the model too, but we don't care about that. Um, yeah. So so hold tight, hold tight. This is the fun part. We can. The, ex the expression carries the model with it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But does it, is this? No, thing? no. I was thinking just like while we're trying to figure these pieces out, we could build ourselves, say, like an array of classes that each have uh, an array of students and stuff as like a, a fixed list, and then yes. we can take that list and then we can play with it while yes. we're figuring this stuff out. Yes. So let me do this. Just just because we're at time, I'm gonna go play around with this. I think this is what we're looking for. I'm going to go play around with it. And then what we're basically going to do is that we're going to try to uh, kind of, I think this is exactly what I was looking for in this meeting, right? I wanted to be able to go and say, can I, what's another really fraudulent way we can rely on top of something else? How can we do you know, something really amazing without actually solving the problem? <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't wait to see what Sam is going to do about this. It's going to be ridiculous. He's going to be like, oh, my God, dude, why did I even start this project with you? <laughs> You're going to give him a heart attack. <laughs> anyway, listen, I got to run. But, Paul, thank you so very much for hanging out with me today. This is exactly what I want to do. And mm -hmm. uh, let's let's connect again, you know, maybe Friday. Friday you know, we'll Friday. see you around. And uh, we we might actually we might actually come up with something. I think this might work. <laughs> yes. All right, all right, man. Thank you so yeah. much. Take care. Hit me up on Discord if you need any. Yes, input. yes, I will. Yes, thank you so much. Take care, my friend. Bye. Cheers, man. Bye.